Hi, we're Ariel. And Michelle, and we're, we're the, the Board, board game, game Tutors. Today we're going to be doing advanced concepts for the board game Forbidden Desert, specifically going over all the different types of tiles. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we have all the tiles laid out. As you can see, most of them look identical when they're upside down like this, or I don't know if it's right side up or desert upside down. Up. <laughs> yeah, desert side up, exactly. So most of them look the same because a lot of the fun of the game is discovering what tile is where, since it's gonna be different every game. So yeah, excavation is half the fun. Mm -hmm. So you can see there are a couple that we already know what they are, or we have an idea of what they are by looking at them. So up there, that is the starting space. I don't know what the official term is, but you can see the picture that has the player uh, markers on it. Mm -hmm. It's a helicopter crash landing site, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that's where the characters start, and you can see the helicopter that crashed there. So obviously this needs to be unique because you need to know where to start. Mm -hmm. And then the other ones, which we'll go over more in depth later, as those, you can see here. Mm -hmm, those are the water tiles. So there you can see there's like a picture of a tree and maybe some grass, and there is a, a water drop in the bottom right corner. So that shows you that this is a water tile. There are three of these. One, two, three. Now there is a bit of a catch, however, because two of these have a water well on mm -hmm. them when you flip them over, yeah. but one of them is a mirage, and when you flip it over, it does not have water. It just has rocks. We'll go more over that later. So again, that's part of the discovery that you do during the game. So two of these actually have water, so that way you can combat your thirst but one of these does not have water and it is a mirage. And when you flip it over, it has nothing. Just like in the real desert. All right, so let's go back to all the regular tiles and what happens on the other side of them. Okay, so for our first example. Let's go ahead and flip this one. Okay, this one is unique. It's called the launch pad. This is the spot that you need to find in order to to end the game, to win the game. So basically in order to leave with your ship and all of its parts put together, you need to be on this tile. Once all the players are on this tile and you have found all the parts before that point, then you win the game. So obviously the way you can tell this is a launch pad, it looks like a launch pad. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell by the border, it's also the launch pad because it has nothing else on it besides its special edging. Mm -hmm. So that is that. And we've gone over this already, so we're not going to spend too much time on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, something else we've already gone over. This is a part location clue. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the most important thing to find in the game because you're trying to locate all the different parts, the four different parts. And for each part, as we've already discussed, there are two part location clues. And together they give you the coordinates within the grid of the part that you're looking for or of the part that they show you, one of the parts that you're mm -hmm. looking for. And how do we identify this one? So in the bottom right corner, you can see the symbol that shows which part this is giving you a clue to finding. And that is the solar crystal. Oh, look, the obelisk is showing us where the solar crystal is. So as you yes. can see with all these tiles, well, one of the really nice benefits about the tile is all the pictures on the opposite sides of the desert tiles are really thematic. They show you a lot, of a lot of them show you exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So here, this shows you, part, oh, this actually shows you the exact location of the solar crystal. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, if you only have this one, it doesn't actually show you the exact location. You need to find the other one before you can do that. Mm -hmm. And it also gives you the left-right uh, direction mm -hmm. of this particular solar, uh, this particular, uh, I want to say relic, but uh, part. part. <laughs> um, so this gives you the left-right direction, and that's another way you can tell it's the solar crystal because it's orangish. Yeah, it has those orange edges. Yeah, so um, that's one way you can tell, and the fact that it has a solar crystal picture on the bottom right corner. Right, and then we also have located the other part location clue that goes with this one. If I remember, yes, it is there. <laughs> <laughs> so you would be looking to find both of these in order to locate the solar crystal, and you can see the arrows are going to point you to right below the other one. Yeah, there you go. So after you flip one, and then later on when you flip the other one, because usually you can't flip them in sequence, like one, then flip the other one. Uh, you get really lucky if you do that on a game. Mm -hmm. um, then you would place that part here. And we've gone over that before, so no need to talk about that for too long. Okay, so those are some of the tiles. Now what's the next one we're going to talk about? So obviously 
Oh, the main way you can tell part location clues is, like we said, the bottom right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. oh, now, uh, when you flip over another uh, tile, uh, this is what you're going to find the majority of the time when you flip over tiles. So as you can see here. In the bottom right corner, there is a gear symbol. This represents gear cards, which are in the gear card draw deck, which will be off to the side. You can see it over there. So and then you can tell here, this matches that symbol right there. So um, there are gears on it, so obviously it's a gear card. Um, these give you special powerful tools that you will use to help you get out of the Forbidden Desert. We're not going to go over these in this video, but this whole stack of gear cards over here, the majority of the, of the tiles that you will flip over in this game will have this symbol on the bottom right hand corner. This means once you flip excavate this tile, flip it over, you have to meet the conditions for excavation, obviously, that we discussed in previous videos. Um, then once you flip this over, you also immediately grab the top card of the deck. Mm -hmm. So that's an example. And as you can see, there's a nice uh, thematic picture of a desolate, uh, abandoned uh, cityscape. ancient cityscape. So that is what you're gonna, going to be encountering for the most part in this game. Mm -hmm. So here's another example with a gear card. This one has like a lonely tower, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it looks all mechanical. And what's that symbol there? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's it all, add, it all adds to the theme of going around, discovering different things, not knowing, well, is this tile over there? Or is this tile up there in the top right corner? I don't know where anything is because I set it up randomly without looking. So um, yeah, obviously like you have to look at, when you're setting it up, uh, when you set up the game, obviously the compass symbol has to be pointing northwards. Otherwise, everything would be a mishmash all over. This would be upside down and that, <laughs> would, that wouldn't work. So whenever you flip stuff over, you always take the tile. So like this, you take the tile and just flip it like so. Mm -hmm. So that way the, the north side is still facing north. Right. So those are examples of two regular tiles that give you nothing besides gear cards, which for the most part are helpful in conquering the desert and escaping, but they are not what you need the most. You need these parts the most, right? these tiles the most. Right, in order to collect parts and be able to win the game. Mm -hmm. And also, while we're on the topic of gear cards, let's go over here to the helicopter crash landing site. So obviously you can tell this is the helicopter crash landing site. What's on the other side, Michelle? This is a gear card tile. Yep. So you can always remember that one because it's always the same tile that you start on. If you want to find a gear card, you can excavate that tile. If you don't want to find a gear card and you're mainly looking for parts at, at whatever point you're at in the game, then you probably don't want to bother flipping this tile because you already know what's on the other side of it, if you remember. Mm -hmm. But if you really are in desperate need of a particular gear card, you know by going to the helicopter crash landing site, you will find one gear card. That's right. So that's just something to keep in mind. But aside from that, if you're not looking for gear, which for the most part you're not, because you want to get these part location clues that we have described below. So, um, yeah, and obviously the uh, launch pad as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to spend your effort not trying to collect gear uh, for the most part, but going for these. Right. All right. So shall we go over water tiles now? Yes. Okay. So as we described before, these are the three that you can tell. Obviously, if there's sand covering them, you can lift the sand to double check. Okay. Yeah. There. This is a water tile. Right. And you can tell they're water tiles. Like Michelle said, on the desert side, they have water droplets. But as we told you before, not all of these have water. So let's go ahead and flip over all of them. So let's flip over this one. Let's go over that, Michelle. Okay, so if we flipped this tile over, we'd be happy because it is actually water. And as we've talked about, one of the ways you can easily lose the game is by running out of water. So you need to make sure that you are keeping your water meter full for every character. So for example, um, we know this is a water tile. So um, in order to get water, for the most part, um, you want as many people as possible on top of a water tile when you excavate it. Mm -hmm. Because when one of these characters, so let's say earlier the green character came here and he's here now, and then later on the blue character, he came here as well. Now they're both on this. The blue character on his turn for one of his actions 
excavates this water tile. Mm -hmm. so you would flip, flip it over. over. Sorry. Like so. Okay. And when that happens, everybody, sorry, put them back on top. Everybody who is there gets two water to add to their canteen. So, mm -hmm. um, so you would take the card for each character mm -hmm. and let's pretend they were both down several spaces. Let's see what happens there. Okay, so the explorer was at three. He gets two water, so he can't go up two, but he can go up one. So he's his canteen is now full. Mm -hmm. The water carrier, he was at two, so you go up two marks. One, two. So this is the main way that you will be getting water from the game. However, yes. one really important fact. You can only do this once. Yeah, when you flip the tile, that's when you get the water. You can't go back. Yeah, so even though you know there's a well there, for some reason you can't get water from it. Like, I know there's water there, but for some reason I can't drink. Yeah, so that's one of the things that's not terribly thematic about the game, but it does make sense as far as making it challenging. And uh, we'll describe the exception to that rule later on when we talk about the water carrier's specific power. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Just mm -hmm. so we don't get you, get you all confused. Yes. <laughs> and then there's one other way that you can get water, which is to pass water between mm -hmm. characters. So, for example, let's say, um, so let's use these two cards as an example here. Um, uh, let's say the water carrier really needed water. Um, let's say, here, let's make a more realistic example of mm -hmm. passing water between the two people. Let's say the water carrier was at zero. And the explorer was at two. So obviously, the water carrier is in very great danger of dying. Yes. From sun beats down cards. So he asks the explorer, his friend, uh, <laughs> while he is on the same tile as him, uh, it can either be the water carrier's turn or the explorer's turn. This can happen at any time, mm -hmm. uh, as long as they're on the same space. And I won't talk to you about the water carrier special ability because that just muddles things. <laughs> but well, what happens, Michelle? So basically they can transfer water. And this is a free action. It doesn't count toward your total actions. And you can check there. Yes. You can also give water and pass equipment to others on your tile for free at any time. Exactly. So, and so you can take four actions. That's a free one. Mm -hmm. So basically the explorer's water would go down at the same time that the water carrier's water would go up. So it just transfers from one player to another. So he would go down from two? To one. He would go from zero to one. So they're obviously somewhat desperate at this point because they're both fairly close to dying from thirst. Mm. So um, ignoring this text for now, we'll describe it more later. Um, that would be an example of sharing water between two people. And mm -hmm. you don't just have to give one. You can give two if you want to. Obviously, then the explorer would be in danger now and the water carrier would be fine. Right. So. And this can happen on any tile. So, like, if we pretended they were up here instead, um, that would be fine. They just need to be on the same tile in order to pass water that one of them already has to the other. And so, yeah, that is that. And also... Uh, while we're on the topic of free actions, uh, something else that's very important that where you have to be on the same tile is if anyone has any gear cards over here, and whenever you grab a gear card, you take it, and let's say I was a water carrier and I had it right here. If I had a gear card, I would keep it next to my card because it's my gear card. And if I ever shared a space with anyone else for a free action, not one of my four, but a free action, I could give this to the explorer. Mm -hmm. So that is something else you can do for free yeah. on the same tile. Exactly. So those are two important free actions that you can do that do not cost you action points. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So what were we talking about? We were talking about tiles. So let's stop talking about people for the time being <laughs> and move these guys off the board. So there's one more type of tile that we need to go over. Mm -hmm. And, oh, sorry, forgot. Uh, this water tile over here is also very important because when you flip it over, it's nothing. It's yeah. <laughs> bones and death and sand. So this is the mirage that we were mentioning. One of the water tiles is not going to have water at all when you flip it over. So when you excavate this, you get nothing. So that could be really disappointing if you were desperate for water, but that's what it's like in the desert. Yeah. So like you got everybody to this tile and you flip it over and nothing. <laughs> 
It's like, I'm like, hey, I saw water. No, like, you saw water. I don't know. Like, you start bickering or something. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's the other possibility. And just so you know exactly what it is, there's another well. Mm -hmm. So, like we said, there are two wells out of the three water tiles that actually have water. Mm -hmm. So, that is that. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to go over the last type of tile. Okay, so there's another one to flip. Go ahead and flip that. This is a tunnel. Tunnels are special for a couple of reasons. When you're in the tunnel, for one thing, they protect you from the sun, which makes sense because you're not out in the beating down sun. So when a sun beats down card comes up from the storm deck, you will not lose water if you're in a tunnel. You can tell it's a tunnel because on the bottom left corner, there's a tunnel. Mm -hmm. And there's also an illustration of a tunnel, as you can see. Yeah. And then these tunnel cards also are gear card, I mean, sorry, tunnel tiles. So on the bottom right corner, you have a gear card symbol. So you would also get a gear when you excavate this tile. And when you grab a gear card, you take it, put it next to your player card. Mm -hmm. So that's not all they can do. So the other special thing about tunnels is that you can travel from one tunnel tile to another. I guess you traveled under the forgotten city. Yes. So there is another tunnel. There are three tunnel tiles. So once they're flipped, if they're unblocked, because if they're blocked, then you can't go through them. But if they're unblocked, you can travel from one tunnel tile to another tunnel tile as if you were doing a normal single movement. Yeah. So that takes one action point out of your four possible. Mm -hmm. So this is important because it gives you more mobility in terms of I'm on this side of the board. No, I'm on this side of the board. So um, I just went under the city from one tunnel to another tunnel opening. And I'm still protected from sunbeats down in both locations, but I am also uh, able to travel, uh, possibly even far distances, to get all the way across the board. Right. And obviously, in every game, it's going to be different as to where your tunnels are placed and how far you get to move across the board when you go from one tunnel tile to another. So the second that you have two sand tiles on any of these tunnels, they are blocked. You cannot use them as possible transit areas right it stops I guess. <laughs> right as with any tile once there are two pieces of sand it's considered to be blocked mm -hmm. so that is that and um specifically so if there were two sand on here and two sand on here then this tunnel would only be useful in terms of it protects you from the sun right which is very important mm. so yes that is that and as you can tell all three tunnels have gear card symbols on them so Whenever you discover a tunnel, you will find a piece of gear. Mm -hmm. So as we discussed, the wells help you to not die of thirst. The tunnels also help you because they protect you from the sun. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you don't want to spend a lot of time going after wells or going after tunnels because you really want to find these as fast as you possibly can. Right. So that is that. And obviously, uh, we could flip over all the tiles, but they're all different variations. They have interesting artwork with a gear card. And so uh, we won't go over that. And obviously, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of, uh, will be part location clues. Mm -hmm. So that is that. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Board Game Tutors. You can also find us on BoardGameGeek.com. Our username is The Board Game Tutors. That's one word. And we really appreciate your comments, uh, any questions you have or clarifications. Likes, subscriptions. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to share this video with any of your friends, go ahead and do so. We really appreciate it. And yeah. We will see you in the next video about Forbidden Desert. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye, everybody.